I don't know what else to do other than just keep at it. Day six in Kansas. It's only about 52 degrees, but the high today is 53. Good front coming in, about 30 mile an hour wind. It's gonna be like 28 tonight, so deer ought to be moving. I was gonna sit all day, but I think I'm gonna go in there and hang a lock on. It seems like the deer are using that little section a little bit different than they did two years ago. That tree I'm in, last time all the deer kinda come across the edge about 30 yards in front of me. Well, this time, it's like every deer has taken the trail straight underneath me. And it's just, you know, you'd have to make a straight down shot, which probably contributed to that last, cost of me that last deer, so. I'm gonna pick me out another tree where I can have them walk that trail broadside to me and probably hang me a lock on in there because they're walking right there under me and I'm pretty low and don't have any cover and they're looking at me. Which these deer, Kansas, it's almost like it don't even matter. I mean, they look at you and then they walk to 20, 30 yards and hang out. And, but big old buck might not do that. So anyway, probably run to a gas station, get me some gas station pizza or something real quick. another one. They're chasing them this way. She's coming toward me. 
I had to hang a lock on I almost hung it further, further in that corner. It's about two o'clock. The wind is um, supposed to be southwest this afternoon. It's starting to switch now. So I'm gonna probably go ahead and climb down and move to where I'm gonna sit this afternoon. May try that tree over there where that those bucks ran by because I think I can kind of get away with the southwest there. But a lot of these deer are bedded up in here, so it's blowing straight to them. Whereas if I was over there, it might be just off. So that's probably what I'll do. The tree I was looking at is too freaking big. Look at one of these other trees and see if there's one big enough to hang a stand in. I guess I'm just going to see what I can do with this one. About ridiculous, really. Only two sticks high. There's a pain getting in here. I'm set up right on this fence row. There's like beds all under me where these deer bed down along this fence row. So it's definitely kind of an aggressive move. But I'm in Kansas and it's the time of year when it can pay off to be extra aggressive. So we'll see what happens. Can't even hardly move where this dang old tree shakes. Bucket, that's great. I had just sat down. Got my antlers in case I need them. Not sure if that's a shooter or not. Literally my butt. Oh god, that's a shooter. sitting on this morning. Rattled at him. He looked and looked and looked and didn't like it and left and blew a couple times. Actually, the, probably the last time I rattled was this right here on the same property. I rattled and had like a 150 inch 10 pointer stand up and run off. Now that deer just took off. It's like, what is out here that's making all these bucks run off to the sound of rattling?
Sure, that's one of the same eight pointers from yesterday morning. Probably a, at least a mile away, if not more. Big old dang buck, dude. Shooter just getting down the next field edge. Snort with that and got him stopped and look. Stared for a minute. Just took off. These borderline type, but maybe shooters. 
that I've tried rattling and snort and how they just take off. They ain't big enough to even just go and go fight with a random buck around here. It's a little after three. Just saw a dude walking to the edge of the woods carrying a bow in the next field over on the neighbors. His wind is totally You gotta love a dark to dark set where the last deer you see is at 10.30. Man, that's fun. It's November 21st. It's like day nine or 10 here in Kansas. It's about a little after three. Going in here to this thin little strip where all these deer bed and I wanted to get in here really early. Theoretically, I'll have some does come in there and bed in there around me and maybe a big buck will be in there with one of them or come looking for one of them. So, We'll see, every time I've sat here, right after daylight, I've had um, buck, uh, you know, bucks of some kind come through there checking for does. So, we'll see what happens, looking forward to it. There's a few deer that come down the edge of this tall grass right in the middle of the field. So I'm going to go to the woods close to where they came out of because as far as afternoons that seems like a maybe a good chance of getting something in bow range. This was that grass I saw those deer run down. Looks real good just inside the woods right here. Good trails coming out of here. Real good trail coming out. All through here for sure. Got a little pinch right here between these big logs and this creek. There's a bed right off this field edge. We'll climb this tree right here. There's that patch of grass they were running down. Six pointer or something. He come over here, he's gonna be dead. I don't wanna call to him, I'm gonna wait and see where he goes on his own. He's huge, he's a big old six pointer. Tomorrow's the last morning anyway. 
Oh, he's gushing. I just drilled him. That joker is bleeding like you wouldn't believe. He's about to go down. He's about to go down. Boom. Boom. Yes. Yes. He's a monster. <sighs> Dead right there. Yes! Praise the Lord, son. Oh, thank God. Yes, yes. Tomorrow morning was my last hunt. Yes! Yes! That is a gnarly looking buck. He's pretty. Oh, he's down right there too. Oh, thank God. I have been on the worst streak of my life. I mean, I've had my butt whooped. I've been at the lowest point I've ever been bow hunting. I was gonna hunt this afternoon in the morning. I was gonna head back to Ohio. And I just knew I was going home empty handed. And, ah, yes! Right there, got him in the freaking jugular. I hit. I wanted to put it like down through the vitals, but he was straight under me. My first pin's 30, so I put it right there. Shooting at a target, I'd be eight inches high right there, and it hit exactly where I was aiming, but freaking drilled him. I mean, he's dead right there, right there on the edge of the field. I can drive up to him. <sighs> Joker's gnarly, son. Beautiful. Couldn't have worked out any better. Plenty of daylight, no tracking. I don't know if my heart could have even took a tracking job if a deer didn't die in sight right now. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. The way I've been shooting and just couldn't get my head right and everything else. And I mean, I just, it's been unbelievable. I mean, it's just been, like I said, the lowest I've ever been bow hunting ever. You know, those, both of those bucks in Georgia then shot the biggest deer of my life a week ago and couldn't find it. And that joker right there, he out, son. I'm gonna climb down. Bro. I just killed one, dude. Did you for real? Yes, for real. Watch him fall. Dead, dead? Like, dead, dead. He's laying 30 yards from me right now. A big one? He's basically a giant six-pointer with some razzle-dazzle on there. Dude, some points on him. dude, I've been wanting to say I gave one the Ed and Field dead and field treatment for like three years, and this joker died like one foot out of the field, so I can't say it. <laughs> Oh well, maybe next time. He freaking, I set up on this trail a couple days ago. The only deer I've seen on any property I can hunt in the afternoon was a couple days ago. There's just part of grass that ain't cut. And some deer came out there and I just come and set up on this trail. And um, 
it walks broadside to me like 25 yards where he didn't take that trail he wants to walk straight under me and i had all this cover behind me so once it got past me i wouldn't have been able to shoot him i basically shot him like i did that kentucky buck the other year except i hit him in the neck and just i've never seen so much blood in my life dude but let me huh I mean, he's like the biggest six-pointer I've ever shot, and I've shot a couple big ones. I mean, I'll send you a picture of him. Let me get down. He's right here. Joker's stone cold dead too, buddy. He's right up here somewhere. Watch him fall. There's my knock. There he is, he almost made it to the field. <clears throat> oh, he's an eight pointer. He's nice. Sleeper line. Man, what a pretty buck. Nice and wide. I thought he was a big six pointer. Turns out he's an eight pointer. It's pretty. Most likely a three year old if I had to guess. Nice and wide. Just honestly, man, I was just literally at the lowest point I've ever been deer hunting and um, you know I was leaving tomorrow and I said Lord if you give me a, a chance at a decent buck please I mean just never between those Georgia deer and just getting my butt whooped in Ohio and then losing the biggest deer of my life <sighs> about a week ago I mean I've just never felt so freaking low you know, everybody says bow hunting's the highest highs and the lowest lows, and it's the truth. And, um, you know, it's just, man, it feels great just to be able to get a second chance at a decent buck. I mean, you know, this thing ain't nothing like the one I shot, but, man, he's pretty. Nice and bladed. He's a good-looking deer. So, thank you, Lord. Awesome. Awesome. He could even be four. I don't know. Got a big body on him. Of course, a Kansas three-year-old probably would. Not that matters, really. Yeehaw, I'm going to get all my stuff because I always forget something. And if it gets dark, it's going to be even worse. Get my truck, call the farmer's son. I'm gonna give all my deer to him. So I'll call him and hook up with him and get this deer cleaned and get it to him. But thank you, Lord. Unbelievable. Subscribe and comment for a chance to win some free half bow wheel travel merch. I always forget to say that. Anyway. <laughs>